Look at all this bad code. Fortunately, JSX Ally, which is a plugin for ESLint, is telling me exactly what is wrong and exactly how my code is not web accessible. If you want to learn how to use JSX Ally, stick around and I will show you how. I've been playing around with ESLint plugin, JSX Ally, or just more commonly known as JSX Ally, and it's been a super tool for uh, implementing code that is more web accessible, and the best thing about it is there's a bunch of recommended rules, so it really takes the burden off of the developer to know and be familiar with web accessible rules, and uh, enables us to create more web accessible applications. So most of this video is going to focus on the rules within the ESLint RCJSON file uh, for JSX Ally. But real quick, I'm going to go over the dependencies that you need and uh, how I set this app up. So I've just created an app using Create React App. And all that I've really done, is, and you can see the package JSON here, most of this just comes standard in Create React App. However, I did add the Airbnb uh, config for ESLint. So that gets you all the uh, recommended standards from Airbnb. And when you add that, it actually includes this ESLint uh, JSX Ally plugin right here. So that's what enables web accessibility. And um, so pretty straightforward on the actual setup. And in, my, in the video details, uh, there will be a link to an article I have that shows you how I set this up. It'll have the commands and uh, anything you need to get it set up. So the next thing that you need is you'll need your actual uh, ESLint RC JSON file. And you can see my setup here, but once again, I'll have a link. Uh, it's really straightforward. Um, the main thing that you want is that in the extend section, you want this plugin, JSX Ally slash recommended. So what that does is it actually automatically enables all the recommended rules from JSX Ally. And uh, that gets you, it's really a great starting point, And honestly, for most people, it's actually good enough to be um, all that they need to do to configure JSX Ally and uh, start having web accessibility uh, rules enforced on their code and their applications. So there's a big list of rules from um, JSX Ally that get enforced on your code. And I'll have links, uh, once again, to the documentation where you can read more about those rules. But in this video, I'll go over a couple rules. Uh, basically, I have this bad code here that um, JSX Ally is unhappy with for some reason with each of these lines. And then I've actually got a custom component, and I'll show you how with one of the rules we can add an option where it'll actually um, take a look at even your custom components and make sure that they are adhering to whatever web accessibility rules you have specified. So let's go over to our ES, uh, so actually let's take a look at the terminal real fast here. And I've got the app running, but because um, we have JSX Ally enabled and ESLint enabled, then these violations of web accessibility standards are actually keeping my code from compiling and running properly. And that's what we want as developers. Um, there's, we don't want to launch code that's got these kinds of uh, kind of like standards type bugs in it. Um, we don't want to launch that kind of code. So uh, it's good that we have ESLint telling us exactly what we need to do. So let's look at a couple of these. So we can see that um, image elements must have an alternate prop. Uh, so that enables people who maybe have difficulty seeing the image, then their screen reader, for example, can read whatever the alternate text is in that, in that alt tag. So that they know maybe it's a picture of mountains, they can be told that it's a picture of mountains. Um, here, I am using a role that I set to barf. And obviously that it's not a valid role, it's not an ARIA compliant role. Um, and here we've got scope property, can only be used on th elements. So I've got a, a paragraph element here and it is not happy with that. I did absolutely nothing other than setting this JSX ally recommended uh, rule set on here. And already it's telling me about these things that I've got problems with. So um, those are all good things. We can, we know pretty straightforward from the error what we need to do to fix it. So like this, I can fix with alt equals test. So there we go. No more, no more bug there. 
But this video is really not about fixing the code on this end, it's really about the setup for JSX Ally. So, just real quick, there is also a strict rule set. Instead of recommended, you might see that, um, and all that it is is, as it says, it's a little more strict. Recommended lets you add some options to a couple of the rules, and those are listed really well in the docs. Um, I'm going to focus on actually adding a custom set of rules that will play well with recommended or strict. Um, it's different than the difference between recommended and strict. Adding your own rule sets down here is just uh, customizing rules that already exist in JSX Ally, and you're just saying, okay, maybe I don't want an error on those, like we're getting down here. Maybe I want it to warn me, and I'll see that in the terminal, but it'll still compile. So let's actually set one of those up. And the rules that we're going to set up relate to these errors over here. So the first one that we're going to set up is, let's say, JSX. Here we go, A11Y. And let's set the alt text rule that we're looking at with the image tag. So first thing I'm going to do is have it tell us to warn on that. So now you can go, we can go over here and we can see still the same uh, readout of what I need to do to fix the issue. However, instead of an actual breaking error, it's now just set to warn. So that's one way that we can customize the rules. So that's kind of overriding the default that the recommended rule set is, which for alt text, it's an error, not just a warn. So let's look at just one more of those. And we're just going to make this video real quick, just give you a taste of what um, some of these rules are and um, what can be done to customize them. So another one where, we've just, where I'm just going to put a warn on here. And once again, now we've got this role, uh, this fake role that I just made up. It's now set to warn, but we can still see we've got a couple of breaking issues, so our code's still not compiling. So let's try another one. Let's actually take a look at... Um, let's actually take a look at my pick here and um, see if we can get it to actually fail. Um, because one thing I'm looking at here is I've got pick, and let's look at this custom component here. Okay, it's a div inside there, nothing too interesting, but it looks like I'm trying to do something around pictures or images or something like that. Like, uh, maybe this could be an image instead on the inside. Regardless of what that is, it looks like I've got some kind of picture attempt here, and if we have an alt tag of picture on some kind of picture component, it's not really very useful, it's not descriptive. This Any uh, screen reader could say, okay, this is a pic or image or whatever element, um, and it can comprehend that. The alt tag is really to add more details, like what is it a picture of? So let's go in and actually set up one of these rules, this rule about um, not having redundant images, uh, redundant alt tags, um, in this case on an image uh, or a pic or whatever component we care about. Uh, let's actually set it up to be able to interpret our custom component and actually Hold it up to the JSX Ally standards. So we'll get that in here. So we've got the rule name there, and let's set up these options here. Let's go ahead and set that to two, and play around with that number and see if there's any difference there. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to add in this custom component in this case, is my pick component. So now it will look for any components of um, type pick. And actually, let's see if we get any thing from there. Okay, even just implementing that, now it's looking at this alt, and it's saying, okay, picture is redundant. And that's a default configuration uh, for this rule, is that an alt tag of picture is considered redundant as long as um, it's understanding that it's supposed to look at that component. Like if that was an image tag with an alt of picture, that would flag it. Now it's also going to flag on this pick component. So let's set up a couple of custom words in here. Not that we really need picture, so let's add pick. And So 
now we put in pick, it's going to flag that too. We just put in PI, you know, it's not that smart. It doesn't try to guess that that was supposed to be pick. It's looking for this exact match of pick, or if we put in photograph. So there we go where um, we've added this custom configuration, uh, this custom option to our image redundant alt rule. And now it's able to parse the components that we have that are um, custom components. Let's set this to one and see what it does. I actually don't remember off the top of my head, but I was guessing that it would change it from an error to a warrant, and sure enough, it does that. So here we go, uh, fiddling with this first value here from a two to a one, changed it from a breaking error to simply receiving a warning. So with that said, then um, in the video details, I'll link once again to um, an article that goes deeply into the rules and has some links to the rules that you can look at uh, the list of rules for JSX Ally. It's really worthwhile to dig into that. It's really worthwhile to just at least get this recommended rule set set up on any app that you're using, uh, making that maybe a default for your team. Uh, there's a lot of value in it. it uh, it's so easy to make our apps accessible and um, the tool set is out there. So with that, I hope that this is helpful for a quick intro into it. And uh, thank you for your time.